Hey, welcome. Well, I'm about to wrap this, uh, my next project up. It's not on this video, it'll be my next one. It's a big uh, black wall and a salad bowl. But anyway, before we get into uh, this cherry crotch bowl, my friend who uh, makes the micro beavers and the little beavers and puts some more on eBay, uh, he didn't say how many. But anyway, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to my video number 177. And you have a full explanation there, but you can go on, on eBay and uh, type in micro beaver, two words, or little beaver, two words, and look them up, and uh, you'll get all the information there, and you can buy you one. They're nice, and they're reasonable. Uh, let's move on to this cherry crotch bowl. Well, I just wrapped this bowl up. It's cherry. It was a, it was a crotch, and uh, you can see how it came down here and here. And it turned out really nice. It's uh, nice and smooth. Uh, no cracks. I did something a little different in there. It's got epoxy with a, uh, a silk dogwood bloom in the bottom. Basically, that's it. And I'm going to show you how I made this thing from start to finish. Let's get on with it. Well, I went out in the wood pile and I was going to cut me off a piece of walnut. I hadn't made a walnut bowl in a long time. And I got some of it that's like 18 inches around. I thought I'd make a couple big walnut bowls. And I spied this thing out here. And I don't know what it is, but I'm thinking it's cherry. It looks like cherry. It's got a few ants on it. Uh, I, I found probably the best thing to kill these rascals. I picked me up is Oh, about 25% Dawn's uh, dish soap or whatever you call it, and uh, white vinegar. And it kills these ants just about on contact. It's not toxic or nothing like that. But it seems to, uh, they seem not to like it very well. But it's got like, Looks like it could be pretty rotten right in there. It's got land here, land here, land there, land there, land there, land there. And you know, it's just, uh, I think it has potential. I'm thinking I'm going to cut it off right about here. But I know this is bad. And, and just see what it looks like inside. And it may be punky all the way through. It may go back in the burning hole. Uh, we just had to see. I got a sore thumb for some reason. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put a face plate on this side, and this this is going to be the bottom of my bowl, however it turns out. But first thing I'm going to do is I notice that this and this are just a hair off the angle. So if I put a face plate right here, it's going to make my center over here like off over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it in there with the drill press with a large forester bit and make me a flat right here. So that it'll be, you know, directly where I want it right there. So let me get that done and I'll be back and we'll put this sucker on the lace and see what kind of mess we can make. Alright, I put the four inch forester bit on it and cut her down a little bit. You can see right here that it was, the angle of the dangle was just about a quarter inch off and I got off just a little there. I think this uh, soft spot in the center pulled me a little bit. So I'm going to take this and move it over just a hair because I want to know if I'm just going to get some away. That's, uh, I'm going to say about six inches, so I wanted the center to be about right there, which uh, I don't guess is that important, but that's where I wanted it. So 
so I'm going to, I mean, I'm just going to eyeball it because I don't think it's going to matter that much. I am going to use a little longer screws today because I, I don't know what's under here. It may be real funky, and this is in grain. I don't have the slightest damn idea how this thing is going to turn out or what it's going to look like or if it's going to look like. At least it ain't got wasp in it. <clears throat> I'm tired of wasp. I'm here to tell you. No more wasp for a while. Even though it's a lot of people say, well, you need to do that again. Well, I might, which I figured out. Okay, I'm going to whirl this thing up and see how bad out of balance it is. Uh, it, it can't go anywhere, but I'm going to stand over here anyway. It's just a good idea. It's not a heavy piece of wood, so maybe it won't be too bad. You know me, I like to turn fast when I can. Looks like about 600 is about where I need to stop at, right about there. So I've got my face shield and all that kind of good garbage. The beaver time. city over here. Man, it's all punky underneath here, but it looks like it hits good wood right about there. Like right under this bark right here and under here. Pretty punky, so I'm going to I'm going to try to get below that. When I'm turning a lot of air, it's really better to have a lot of speed. So I'm right at about 700 now. I'm going to go ahead and Got past that wobble, got past that wobble. Ooh. All right. I got a thousand. I'm in heaven, man. Let's roll. See what a difference it makes. This may end up being a wingless bowl. This wood's pretty dry. Yeah, it's getting there. Let's see what it looks like right there. Try to give you an indication of uh, Ooh, bits of... Oh, that's not bad. See there? See how it cleaned up right in here? I like that. For the use a little bit more right there. Second time. I learned to talk louder, Larry. I was watching one of my videos, and I know what people mean when they say they can't hear me, so I just got to learn to talk louder. Because I, I got those 
lapel mics and all that. But too many buttons and too too low a battery time. It just ain't no fun. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of 80 grit. And I'll do it like this. I'll try to get rid of these right here, see? The secret to using one of these is you gotta keep it moving. If you don't you'll end up with a flat spot. Alright, this is 220 here. Minwax sanding sealer, water based. Alright. There you go, look at that. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Now I really like to soak the bark down. I like to lay it in there like I've got plenty. I do, I've got plenty. So that's why I do it. And I like to make sure this is also acts like harder. So I make sure I get it around my tenon real good. First coat has to be seen really good. And we will sit it, let it sit a while while we are ready to have our popcorn. Nice, nice, nice. Like that. You have to dab this stuff. That's going to be beautiful. That is going to be nice. Yeah, that's probably going to be turned out anyway, isn't it? Looks like most of it is soaked in. I'll probably put another one on before I sand it in. Well, I had a little disruption in the process of so I was sanding and with my air sander, I just noticed it just didn't seem to have had the right air and I've done some checking it looks like my big compressor, the uh, starter control box evidently went out. It's got juice coming in but none coming out and no resetting. So I've got a new one on order. But in the meantime, I jumped my rear end over to Harbor Freight. I got real lucky today. It was a parking lot sale and they had these open box ones and I, I bought a little compressor that was, uh, it came in on the truck, the box was all damaged so they couldn't sell it, so it was marked down to $39, but because it was a garage day sale, it was half price, so I ended up paying $18. And you know, you always need a backup compressor. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff with air. I'll have my new control box in by next Thursday. But, you know, I'm always wanting to, you know, Every little air somewhere up here in the house or something like that. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I've got uh, two coats of sealer on it. Well, first off, remember that void that was in here? I filled it. I decided I didn't want a hole inside of my bowl, so I filled it with uh, shavings. I used uh, two different kinds of shavings. This is walnut and this is like uh, persimmon. And I just done different layers and sort of mixed them up and I used uh, Starbond. Super thin, super fast thin C8. And works like a charm, my friends. So I had to do that three or four times and that's when my compressor went out when I was sanding this down. And uh, it just, uh, you know, it wasn't even blowing hardly any air. So that's when all that happened. So I had to go to town and do all that. Now I'm back. And I'm just hand sanding with 320 the uh, sealer. And the way I like to do it is I, I sand it so I don't see anything shiny. Sometimes you can see a little bit of a ring in there. You, this is an opportunity to get those out. There's my place I filled it. It looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now, this is looking all right. This this is the secret to getting a shiny job at the end, right here. 
If your prep is no good, your final product is no good. It's just that simple. You're better off spend just a little extra time sanding. Looking for those right there. See, they're shiny right there. This ought to be the last one for a while. Maybe, maybe two more, because I like to sand and buff on my final one. This well, just, just makes it so much prettier when you do it like this. This cherry really has turned out pretty good. It even got a little spalting in it. Very pleased with it so far. It's going to be a pretty little ball. Well, it's about in the afternoon the following day. I just had, you know, other things to do. Hey, look here. This is a... Uh, that fourth coach of sealer on it, and you know, I sanded between one of them there. And that's just sealer. Look at look at the shine it's already got. All this needs now is a little steel wool and buffing. But I'm going to wait till I get the inside done before I do that. Uh, now I'm going to put my, my chuck on, and we are going to find everything. Flip it around. Yeah, it's a little harder than I thought. I think I'm going to start with a small one. It's pretty slow. It starts feeling hard to turn. That's going out, that's going in real good, too good, as a matter of fact. Here we go. Now this, you can see it already. This is just a, a steel rod in, inside a Jacob's chuck on a live center. I just use it just for that right there. Try to clean this up a little bit in here. Uh, see what it looks like. Put a little bit of axe uh, abrasive sanding paste on the inside and a little bit on the outside. And uh, I'm going to use a drill with a buffing pad on it for the inside. The outside, I'll probably do it on a buffing wheel later. I may do a little bit now. But I don't like to do this inside spinning.
look and we'll do a good job on the outside. <laughs> it sure is light. I got this, uh, uh, this piece of wood all made up for a, a uh, jam truck. Now one more thing, I got to put a little bit of concave right in there. Because I've got a little bit of a convex inside the bowl. And I'm going to make it match up. I got the laser going. I thought you might like to have a little glimpse of it. Here over here, so here's what I'm putting on it right in there. Yeah, off. All. all right. As you can see, you gotta have a computer. One of those Chinese lasers you can, you can get on eBay. You still get them for, oh, I don't know, three or four hundred dollars. But like I said in the video I did, that ain't all you gotta have. When I mean, you get everything to make it work, but to make it work like you want it to work, you gotta add different things. Put a different head on it, it has an air pump that pumps air, blows air through it, otherwise some woods will catch on fire. You gotta have a container to put your uh, water or fluid in, whatever you want to use. I went and bought one of those big uh, containers at Walmart for you know all the water in, about three or four gallons. And I put a little bit of food color in mine so you could see if it's circulating. There it is, it's done. Alright, let's get it out of there and see what it looks like. And I'll sand that off a little bit and put some cedar on it. And we'll be done with that part. Well, I didn't like the inside, so I decided to do something a little different with it. I took, and this is a uh, dogwood bloom, artificial, right there. And you see it in there? There it is. I glued it down in the bottom with uh, medium CA. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go mix up a little bit of tabletop epoxy and pour it in there just to cover it maybe a quarter inch deep and we'll let that sit overnight and I, I've got to finish the bottom and do some buffing and this thing will be done but like I was saying earlier this is man I tell you I bet it don't weigh two ounces so there you go okay for this this little uh, exercise I'm using total boat tabletop epoxy I like using tabletop epoxy for, for a lot of different things. I like a 50-50 mix for one thing, it makes life a little easier. 
And, uh, you know, it turns well. Like I said before, if you turn fast, it'll turn well. If you turn uh, slow, it's going to chip just like everything else. Unless you've got one of those, uh, what do you call it, negative rate scrapers. I guess, I don't know, I've never tried one. Maybe one of these days I will, but I haven't, don't have one. I, well, you know, I just don't have any problems, so I have one, I guess is what I'm saying. So let them sit there till tomorrow. I had to pop a few bubbles. There you go. I'll catch you tomorrow. Hey, I'm getting ready to buff this, but uh, I got it, you know, start to see how the pressure bought, but that's not true. Anyway, here's here's what it looks like in there now. You can see it pretty good. I'm trying to hold it under the light because it's hard to see. The lighting's not real good, but that's a uh, dogwood all spread out under there with uh, that clear table box, table top epoxy, and it's uh, you know total boat. Turned out real well, no bubbles or anything. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna back this thing up so you can get a better overall look at things. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to take some Max Paste and put on it. I went ahead and uh, finished the bottom with sealer. It's got three coats of sealer. And what I want to tell you is that there is nothing but sealer on this. I quit using the polyacrylic because uh, it, it set up too quick and it always left marks and you had to sand them out. And uh, quite honestly, the result wasn't really that much better, if any. So I'm going to put some Max paste on here and then I'm going to use this wheel to see if we can't get some shine going. Add two hands would be better or three. I need three hands here. As usual I like to do it a little fast. You have to be careful because it'll knock it out of your hand if you're not careful. And I don't want to do the downside there. Okay, and I'm going to get a soft cloth and finish it by hand. It's all those spot there. All right. Well, here's your final product. Nothing major happened. I, I did have to rebuild the bark in a couple of places when it popped off, but that wasn't no big deal. But uh, I think it looks real nice inside there. You can see it pretty good. Hope the lights in there are good enough. So, uh, that's it. This cherry has some real pretty patterns to it. As you can see. Getting the lighting right is, is, is hard to do. Bottom. bottom turned out nice. And here's that place that I fixed right here. It's an ingrain bowl. I'm pleased. Didn't fall off the lake bust anyway, did it? So let me get a few stills of this and uh, we'll uh, see about thinking about the next project. Which I, I've got an idea in my head and just hadn't formulated it yet. Anyway, subscribe and I hope you like what I do. Sometimes I try to do something different, but it's always authentic. I don't hide any punches, that's me. Anyway, uh, hey, call your mama.